So a prime number is something that you may have heard of before in math, but you may have forgotten it. A prime number um, is it, it, they're kind of like special numbers in math. So this is these are uh, numbers. Uh, numbers greater than one, so one is not technically a prime number, um, that uh, are divisible divisible by uh, itself and the number one. Now this is a weird definition. I know you probably don't understand exactly what a prime number is just from that, but once we show you an example, you'll understand really, really quickly what the definition is telling you. So let me give you some examples of prime numbers. The number two is a prime number. Why? Because it's a number greater than one that is divisible by only itself and the number one. So if you try to figure out what can divide into this number two um, evenly, the only two numbers that work are the number itself, which is the number two, and the number one can be divided into there. So two is a prime number. Let me write down some additional primes. Three is a prime number, five is a prime number, seven is a prime number. Let's talk about a few of these numbers. The number three, the only thing you can divide into evenly into the number three is the number itself, the number three, three divided by three is one, and also the number one. Those are the only two numbers that work. Same thing with this number, same thing with this number. The only thing that goes into seven evenly is seven and one. No other numbers, like two, three, four, six, none of them can divide into seven, other than the number itself, seven, and the number one. That's what the definition's telling you. All right, let me go ahead and list some more prime numbers. We'll continue talking about them. The number 11 is prime, 13 is prime, 17 is prime, 19 is prime, 23 are prime, and dot, dot, dot. You can go on and list large, large numbers that are also prime numbers. But if you take any one of them, like the number 23, for instance, the only two numbers that divide into this number evenly is the number itself, which is 23, can of course divide into there, and the number one. No other number goes into 23, like 18, 15, 17, 10. No other number works. Same thing for all of these numbers. That's what we call a prime number. Now let me give you an example of the number that's not prime. So six, the number six is not prime. Can you guess why? Because it can be divided by one, two, three, and six, right? So the number itself can divide in there, the number one can divide in there, but the number two also can divide into six, and the number three can also divide into six. So six is not a prime number. 10 is also not a prime number. You can divide 10 by five, you can divide 10 by two, and so on. So most numbers aren't prime, but these, uh, the special list of numbers, and the ones that you could keep thinking of if you keep going, are also prime numbers. Now, the reason we have to talk about that is because the title of this section is called prime factorization. So we need to tell you what is prime factorization. Prime factorization. We need to talk about what that is. And then we'll show you some examples. It's actually a really easy thing to do. And you will have to learn it in algebra. And it is useful because we are going to kind of kind of use this concept as we go on and do a few other things. So it's when you write a number as a product of prime numbers. If you remember back to what a factor is from the, back, from the last section, a factor was a number that you could multiply it by some, something and get the number of interest. So it was, it was the list of numbers that could, you could do that relative to the number you're talking about. Prime factorization is when we want to take a number and we want to write it down as a product, which means a multiplication of a bunch of these prime numbers together. And then that is called a prime factorization. You're going to understand this very, very easily once we do an example. Let's take the number 32. And we want to write the prime factorization of the number 32. The way you do it is you do what we call a factor tree. Okay, So we look at the number 32 and we ask ourselves, what times what can give me 32? You can pick any numbers you want. I mean, I know that, for instance, um, 16 times 2 is 32. I could do that. But I also know from my multiplication tables from fourth grade, I know that 8 times 4 is 32. So I write this thing called a factor tree. And what this is telling me is that 8 times 4 is 32. Now, 8 is a factor of 32 because of this. And 4 is also a factor of 32 because of this. But notice that 8 and 4, they're not prime numbers. They're not in this list. So this is not a prime factorization. We need to go a little deeper, right? 
then then you ask yourself, what times what can give you eight? And you can pick anything you want, anything times anything to give you eight. So I also know, because I'm good at multiplication, that two times four also gives me eight, right? So what you do is you keep working down this factor tree. You have a two here. Two is actually a prime number. You really, you, you can write it as one times two, but that's, that's it. You're just gonna keep doing that over and over again. So that's prime, so you stop there. But the number four is not prime. Uh, notice it's not in this list. So you write whatever it is you know that multiplies to give you four. So two times two. And notice that we have a prime number here, we have a prime number here, we have a prime number here. So we can't really go any farther in the tree because the only thing we could do is write one times two. And that's just the same thing we have. You know, uh, basically we have the number two already. So we come up here. This four can be written as two times two. All right. So we started with the number 32 and we broke it into two factors and we broke that up and we broke that up and you just keep doing that until you get prime numbers in the bottom of this thing we call a factor tree. So what this factor tree is telling you is if you look at the bottom of the tree, which are these numbers, if you multiply all these numbers in the bottom of the tree together, you're going to get 32. Just like eight times four gave you 32, since you keep splitting these things up until you get to the very bottom, if you take two times two times two times this two times this two, do it in the calculator, you're gonna find that you get 32. And that's basically a prime factorization because we, we're finding all the prime numbers that we can multiply together to give us the number we care about. Notice, it says writing a number as a product of prime numbers. These is a, this would be a product of prime numbers. That's what the dots here are telling us. So if you really wanted to write the prime factorization of the number 32, then the way you write it is like this, prime factorization of the number 32, right? You write it like this, two times two times two times two times two. The reason you're writing it five times is because there's one here, one here, one here, one here, one here. You're just looking at the bottom of the tree. But because two times two times two times two times two can be written as two to the fifth power, this is how we choose to write the actual answers. So this answer right here, this one right here, is what you would write down in your test. You would say that two to the fifth power is what we call the prime factorization for the number 32, because it represents um, a multiplication of these things we call prime numbers to get us the number of interest. All right, so once you know the concept of what we're doing here, uh, cranking through a bunch of problems is really actually kind of fun because it, it, it's very simple, right? So let's look at the number 46 as a second example. Now you can do anything times anything. You can get your calculator out and start dividing by whatever. Um, so I've done that and I figured out that two times 23 is 46. So then I ask myself, is two a prime number? And it is. So I really stop here. I can't go any farther down the factor tree. And I ask myself, is 23 a prime number? And I see in my list it is a prime number, so I can't go any farther here. The only thing I could do would be 1 times 2 and 1 times 23, and that's kind of useless because I already have 2 and 23 in the bottom of my tree. So because I can't make the tree any bigger, I'm effectively done. This is the prime factorization. So if you wanted to write the prime factorization, I'll write it as PF means this is the prime factorization. Uh, what you would write down in your test is 2 times 23. There are no exponents here because you just have 2 to the first power, 23 to the first power. This would be the answer. That would be what you would write down. All right, that's a pretty simple problem. Let's look at something that's not quite as simple as that. What if you had the number 81 and we wanted to find the prime factorization? The first thing that should pop in your head, uh, something times something gives you 81, should be, from your multiplication tables, 9 times 9 gives you 81. You ask yourself, is this prime? Of course it's not prime. 9 can be divided by 3, so it's not a prime number, and it's also not in my list that I kind of gave you as a little cheat sheet there. So I can write 9 as 3 times 3. And I ask myself, is 3 prime? And it is. It's in my list. I also know that this can only be divided by itself in 1, so I know 3 is a prime number. And I do the same thing over here. This 9 can be broken up into 3 times 3. Okay, so if you were going to write down the answer, the prime factorization of the number 81 is 3 to the power of 4, right? Uh, or the way you could write it is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. That's the longhand way to write it, but typically you just write down 3 to the power of 4 because here you have 3 raised, you know, multiplied itself by itself 4 times. 
and that's the prime factorization of the number 81. All right, now let's do one more. We can cram one more here into the side, and then I'm going to move up here and give us a little more room. Actually, I'm going to go and do that now, just so we can get a little bit more room. Let's look at the problem 36, the number 36. Let's say we want to find the prime factorization of this number. So we pick anything we want, anything times anything, giving us 36. So let's pick 9 times 4. 9 times 4. I know that that gives me 36. I know that 9 is not prime and 4 is not prime. And you know that because you can pick two other numbers that multiply together to give us 9. And 3 times 3 is 9, so I break it up this way. And then 4 can be written as 2 times 2. Now I stop here in the factor tree because 3 can only be 1 times 3. That's the only thing you can write there. And 2 can only be 1 times 2. So when you get down to that point where all you have is 1 and the number itself, you stop, your factor tree is done. So the prime factorization here is... Uh, 2 times 2 times 3 times 3, but typically we don't write it like that. We say 2 squared times 3 squared. We like to write it as uh, the prime number raised to some exponent times the next prime number in the, in the factor tree raised to the exponent. So if you get your calculator out and multiply 2 times 2, that's 4, times 3 is 12, and then 12 times 3 is 36. So the prime factorization you see is just giving you the original number you have. Now, I've been telling you when you write these numbers down, just pick any old two numbers you want, right? Let me show you that that actually does work. So let's say we do the problem again, and let's say you're different than me, and you don't think of 9 times 4. Let's say that you remember that 6 times 6 is 36. So you can write your factor tree just like that. There's no problem. But 6 is not prime. You can write 6 as what? 2 times 3. And you can write this 6 as 2 times 3. And you've got to stop there because 2 and 3 are both prime numbers. But look what's happening. The prime factorization uh, is, again, 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. Basically, everything in the bottom of the tree gets multiplied together. So what you end up with is 2 squared times 3 squared. You get exactly the same prime factorization. It doesn't matter what you pick because you're going to bust it down into prime factors anyway. No matter As long as you're doing it correctly, no matter what the first two numbers you pick, if you keep going, you're going to get exactly the same number in the end. Exactly the same number. So let's get a little more practice, and let's say we're going to do the number 100. What is the prime factorization of 100? Again, you pick anything you want. You could pick 4 times 25. Okay, that would work. In this case, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to pick 2 times 50, because I think that's what a lot of people would pick. But you could pick 4 times 25. You could pick 10 times 10. It would work just fine, too. Right? Now, 2 is prime, so I can't do anything else, but 50 can be written as lots of things. I could pick uh, 2 times 25. I could pick... Um, 5 times 10. Either one's going to work. So I'm going to choose 2 times 25. Now 25 can be written as 5 times 5. Now here I'm at the point where I'm, I'm basically finished because everything in the bottom of the factor tree, which are all these numbers, they're all prime. 2 is prime and 5 is prime. If you go back up to that list that we wrote down here, uh, the prime numbers, the first few prime numbers, 2 and 5 are both prime numbers because they can only be divided by themselves and the number 1. So the prime factorization here is going to be equal to 2 times 2 times 5 times 5, which is equal to 2 squared times 5 squared. And that is the final answer, 2 squared times 5 squared. All right. Now we're just going to do one more problem because once you've done one of these, I mean, they're all essentially the same thing. Let's say you have the number 450 very large number. I need to pick something times something to give me 450. And I just happen to know that 9 times 50 gives me 450. And you might say, well, how did he know that? Well, that's because 9 times 5 is 45. That comes from your multiplication table. So 9 times 50, just adding a 0, is going to be 450. And then I know that I can write 9 as 3 times 3. Those are both prime numbers, so I stop. I know I can write 50 as 2 times 25. I could write it as 5 times 10 if I want, and it's going to be the same thing. And then 25 is going to be uh, 5 times 5, so I stop. So because everything here in the bottom, see, the 3 is in the bottom here and here, the 2 is in the bottom here, and the 5 and the 5 are in the bottom. So the prime factorization is going to be what? It's going to be 2 times 3 times 3 times 5 times 5. So you write it as 2 times 3 squared times 5 squared. And that is the final answer. So 2 times 3 squared times 5 squared 
uh, because you have three squared from here, the five squared from here, and the two from here, and you generally write it in ascending, you know, smallest number, smallest prime number going up with the exponents there. So you probably don't understand yet or even care really why factoring a prime number into a prime factorization is important, but the reason it's important is because these factor trees are actually going to come in handy into algebra later on for something that we'll discuss in general, and then the concept of factoring is going to be really, really important in general when we go on down the road here. So we're covering a lot of little topics here that are kind of separate from what we've been doing before, but we're going to join them together here in a little bit, but we're going to talk about factoring quite a bit. So make sure you understand this, and then follow me on to the next section. We'll continue our journey learning all of these skills in algebra. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.